Alright, so this is gonna get complex really, really fast, so I hope you're good with maths. Otherwise, I guess just set up how I did it <laughs> without understanding how it works. But I will try to do my best to explain how I got up with the idea and why I place certain things that way. Uh, but basically, the whole background is to optimize your red bronze refinery. Since right now, out of this moment, if you connect one copper uh, deposit with two gold deposits, you're always going to be short a little bit of copper. So if you want to do the math properly, you need 30 copper ingots and two gold to get one repros in, uh, red bronze ingot. And to achieve that, probably the best way is to kind of connect both gold deposits and one copper deposit to it. Since the drill of the copper deposit, so that one right over here, which is my first copper deposit right here, is going to produce one copper every five seconds. In exchange, one gold is only going to be produced every two minutes. So these two are the gold drills, that is one and that is the other one, which are connected to one and they are dropped down here and combined together. So if you do the maths a bit, and you kind of like calculate up how many copper you get within those two minutes, um, basically you get up to 24. So you get 24 copper within uh, the time span of two minutes and two gold, which means you're short six copper every time. It can be neglected if you want to, but if you really want to optimize, you can sort of try to connect your separ uh, second copper deposit as well to only kind of like partially, right? So you don't get all of the copper ingots along this way. And it just so happens that you can basically, if you go over here, this is my second copper deposit. Um, basically, um, as long as you don't have all the electronics, you can just go randomizers and just hope for luck, which is not optimal. Um, but I'll get to this stuff later. But basically, the, there are these kind of like the, the the molds, right? So you get the you get like the bolts and the uh, the plates and the uh, rods, and it just so happens that if you do the math correctly, that you if you want to get six additional copper ingots into the reference refinery to kind of add up to the 30 perfectly every two minutes you have to send along a fourth every fourth copper along this path to your red bronze inventory from your second copper deposit because if you do the maths every fourth copper means it takes 20 seconds to send a copper along times six, that's exactly the two minutes. So every fourth uh, copper ingot is basically required to send along this path to the red bronze uh, refinery to perfectly optimize it. And to kind of achieve that, you can sort of try to rely on uh, randomizers, but it's not really that efficient. If you go randomizers, you have a 50-50 chance on this one to one goes here, one goes here. Then you have a 25% chance that one goes here and one goes here, which would be every fourth thing, right? And if you go here though, you get a one-eighth chance, which is every eight copper ingot that's probably gonna go along here. If you like, just hope that the randomizer is always perfectly right, which it is not, which is even worse. <laughs> Therefore, there is kind of a way to optimize this with uh, split conveyors, so that, which is a, an electronic device. But it's slightly unreliable. Technically, if there were no lag, you could actually perfectly achieve that. But since there is always a little bit of lag because multiple islands around, terrible servers, bad connection, whatever, it's not 100% reliable, but it's pretty, pretty solid. The idea is, um, since copper takes five seconds to go along, it technically always takes five seconds. So you kind of like space out this way so that it takes pretty much around five seconds for this copper to go here, so that the second one, when it gets here, gets triggered by the sensor and gets along this way, right? The problem is the sensor only lasts for a second. Technically, once again, we have lag, so it can last longer or shorter, and shorter is mostly the case. So it's not 100% accurate, which is why I placed three of them here, to give it a better chance that it actually works. So as you can see, that was perfect. Now if you take a look at this one, that was more or less perfect. And if we take a look at this one, 
they all, they all kind of like light it up more or less perfectly. That's how we want it to be, but it's not 100% guaranteed. But anyways, to explain the background, um, once these are triggered, one of these lasers, no matter which one, this kind of split conveyor receives power, which means anything goes along this way. It's the same idea right here again. Once this goes through here, this split conveyor is triggered. And it's once again the same idea here, once any of these lasers is triggered, the split conveyor gets power and the coppering is sent along this way. So that's kind of like how you achieve the exact 50-50% way through that one goes here, the next one goes here, the next one goes here, the next one goes here, and then the next one goes here again. So that's kind of like the whole background. Um, to set this up with the electronics, it's not too difficult. All you need is really just an infinite power source, in which case I use the steam generator. I know there's kind of like the box and glitches and whatever that you can sort of get infinite powers uh, in other ways, but this is just the most reliable way, considering that this may, these glitches and bugs may be patched. And you don't even have to think about XOR logic or logic or AND logic or whatever. You can just really only go with splitters and with uh, combiners. So basically, since there's nine of these sensors, that means you need nine, um, uh, basically nine connections that receive power. But keep in mind that each of these sensors requires a minimum of four power to output at least one power to the other side, because the sensor, when triggered, consumes three power. So considering if on the input side here, if you would only send along three power, it would output still zero power here on the other side. So as you can see, four power is being passed through out of the seven here, so it only, uh, always consumes three power. Now, since these are nine uh, sensors that you need to connect, uh, the problem is it's not quite going to perfectly line up with the splitters, and you kind of need to work around a little bit. So this is how I did it. So basically, this first splitter is connected directly to the uh, steam uh, generator, which means I get exactly 60 uh, uh, output, or 60 power going through. I split it 50-50 right here to basically these two splitters, and I do the same thing here again to split them up into a quarter each. So they're also 50-50-50-50 for these four splitters. But now we have basically eight wires that we can connect with seven power each, which is fine, but we have a ninth sensor. So I worked around it a little bit by basically splitting up two of these. Uh, let me just double check which one it is. I believe it is, I believe it is these two, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it is these two. So I split them up and I actually, uh, yeah, this, this is still, this is still normal. I split them up over these two, right. There we go. So this is the one special splitter that splits the power once again to these two splitters. And it's not 50-50, because if I were to use 50-50, I get three and three power. And as told, the sensor requires or consumes three power, which means it would result in zero power. So what we do instead is we share this unevenly 60-40, which means one side is four power, the other side is two power. And we do this twice, right? So we have these two that we can send to the sensors, since the sensor will still output one power. And um, these two we combine again with this combiner right over here. So that means we have another four. So we have four, 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 which are the three. Then we have these two, which is five, these two, seven, and these two, nine. So we have nine, basically nine wires that we can connect to the sensors. And then basically pretty straightforward. These are all connected. And then the output of these three, these three right here, you just send them along combiners. It's pretty straightforward. So I set that up right here. So basically this line, this line, and this line each corresponds to one of these triple sensor setup that I have up here. So this one here, basically this sensor line, these three sensors um, relate to these two combiners. And then um, these two, three, three sensors right up here on this, connected to this uh, bronze, uh, copper press. They relate to this one, and the last one connects to these two. And basically, you could technically also use XOR gates. It doesn't really matter. You can use either of the two. Um, but I just use combiner since it makes more sense. Um, and basically, you connect two sensors here. 
the third one here and then you connect this combiner to this combiner and then you have basically all three sensors connected and you redirect this output to the split conveyors that are up here and they do this basically every time so let me just show you real quick from upstairs you can see that so this one as you can see this this split conveyor is connected to this single one this one is connected to one of the sensors on the left this one here as well and this one here as well and you basically just do that for all the three sensors and that way um, you basically have a more reliable way that the power stays active for a little longer so if you check the arrow it just disappears a very very short time this was unlucky that's because of lag again but as you can see this one went sent, was sent along and this basically just tries this is just a basically a, a quick attempt to sort of uh, <laughs> work around the lag a, in a little way it's not as told 100% reliable unfortunately there's still a bunch of copper rings that get sent along here a bit more often than expected but considering the developers can do something about the lag or they're finally going to introduce some sort of a power switch that changes state whenever it receives power then we could make this 100% reliable so basically the idea would then be if you if, if we had some sort of a power switch we put the sensor right here uh, and as soon as one goes along here we change the switch state to the to being powered so basically that this this split conveyor stays powered for the entire time until we get sent along one here then we power this one up with a sensor here again a sensor power this one up and then here again a sensor to disable basically all of these three by flipping the switch back to the other side so basically a powered switch that changes the state to on or off and redirects power through with every time a short power signal is sent into it that would be the best idea to perfectly optimize this kind of form but that's kind of like the generic approach you can give it a shot if you like it go for it if you don't keep the randomizers or just ignore the six ingots that you're missing over there but just later on if you really want to build stuff you're more reliable on uh, red bronze ingot than actually copper ingots so my per personal recommendation is you try that so you have something to show off <laughs> with the electricity stuff since there's really not that much you can do technically you can also build this setup for steel but the issue is going to be steel is produced every 20 seconds or iron is produced every 10 seconds so you'll have to expand this whole row by a bunch since basically these this way here is sort of calculated for five seconds so imagine you'd have to double that to 10 so the sensors would be all the way back here basically but uh, yeah that's about it um i hope this helps in any way possibly there's some nerds out there of you guys who have a better setup if so let me know in the comments i'm happy to apply that one uh if not then uh feel free to use this one thanks